everyone. Welcome back to Leading Entrepreneurs of the World, our 2023 conference here on the One Business World platform. Leading Entrepreneurs of the World represents the intersection of passion, innovation, and determination and serves as a powerhouse for groundbreaking ideas and leadership in action. Our mission here is to ignite the global movement of entrepreneurial excellence, elevating businesses and entrepreneurial behavior uh, and the leaders who possess not just not just expertise, but the vision and resilience to navigate unprecedented challenges. Leading Entrepreneurs of the World uh, focuses on the luminaries who are shaping the future across various industries and acts as a catalyst for change and a testament to the synergistic power of collective leadership. We're very happy to, to welcome to our, our, our next segment, Panos Panay. He is the president of the Recording Academy and he is joining us today from Los Angeles. And he's, his talk this afternoon is the entrepreneurial ec ecosystem of music. Panos, welcome. Thank you, Glenn. Excited to be here. Good, good morning to you in, in Los Angeles. Uh, pleasure, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure, pleasure to have you uh, contributing here to, uh, to our conference. Uh, thank, thank you for all your, all your, all your leadership at, at, at the Recording Academy and all, all of that, that the, the music world, how that intersects with all, all that you do. You know, it's it's it is interesting though when you when you think about it, from uh, from the music industry and artists in and of themselves, they they really are entrepreneurs at the, at the heart, right? Whether whether you're the writer, uh, the singer, the band member, production assistant, producer, etc., always always very entrepreneurial entrepreneurial in spirit. Uh, just curious, uh, just maybe just for our audience, could you give just maybe a quick brief overview of the of the Recording Academy? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, most of you know the Recording Academy through the show that we produce, the Grammy Awards. Uh, the organization in itself is a 65-year-old organization. Uh, many people may not know that it is a, it, it a not-for-profit organization. And it's ultimately a membership-based uh, institution. There are 22,000 members of the Recording Academy, which comprise of just about any musician, any creator, that you know who's ever won uh, a granny. Um, and the organization's mission is ultimately to be an advocate for what I'll call the 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 this class of, of, of creators. So besides the awards that are known throughout the world, uh, we do a lot of advocacy work on uh, Capitol Hill on behalf of this community. Uh, we do a lot of educational work. Uh, we have 12 chapters around the United States um, that uh, offer all kinds of um, community building, if you will, among creators, uh, educational offerings and programming. Uh, we do a lot of support. We have a charity called Music Cares that uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic gave away over $35 million to uh, creators and venues and others who were affected uh, by this. So the organization um, is really dedicated to uh, the sustainability and well-being of what we believe is an uh, extremely important class of, of, of humanity, all the people that create. Um, and the Grammys are the Grammys because it is uh, the only peer-to-peer uh, -peer honor that exists in the music space. And it's why it's been so indelible. And frankly, it's why well, it's one of the few honors that when you get them in life, uh, they persist with you until your obituary. Uh, and that's why it's so prestigious to get a Grammy, because ultimately your own peers that are recognizing your achievements and your excellence. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's a great that's a great overview. I didn't didn't know it was a not for profit. That, that's uh, terrific. And thank you for the, the support, certainly during 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 the pandemic. Um, I'm sure you know, given the need, I'm, I'm sure it was it was certainly well Certainly well served for sure. I mean, you look at you look at you look at music in general and 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 the landscape, uh, whether it's digital disruption, live streaming, and the like. Um, how how nimble has the recording academy had had to be along those lines when when you when you look at a changing landscape in, in, in the music industry and you look at new sources such as streaming and digitization? How how nimble does the the uh, the academy need to be? Well, I, I guess I'll answer it in a couple of ways. The industry first as a whole, which of course our members are part of, um, has been an amazingly resilient industry. Uh, if you look from, 
I would say the advent of, of, of the industry in the early part of the 20th century is gone through a series of continuous disruptions, right? You started with a live industry. Uh, it was at the time appended by the emergence uh, of the long form record, the vinyl, uh, which people don't realize, but when vinyl first came out and recordings first came out, a lot of people thought this will destroy the music business because at the time, artists were making a living by touring. Um, prior to recordings, most people can't imagine that, but there was only one way to hear music in your house, and that is to buy an instrument. Uh, uh, so um, uh, then it was appended again by the emergence of, ra of radio. And again, when radio came about, people thought that would be the end of the music industry. And then TV came about. Um, and then cable television came about. Um, and then the early social networks, such as MySpace, uh, emerged. Then, of course, uh, we moved into digital downloads, then into streaming. Uh, but throughout this, I would say, the last 120 years, the industry and the industry is comprised of creators has remained amazingly resilient and adaptive. And, uh, you know, the uh, the rumors of its death have been greatly exaggerated, to to paraphrase another great American. Uh, in terms of the recording, uh, the record in uh, the recording academy, um, well, we have to be nimble in a number of ways. Number one, it is our job to ensure that everything from the uh, educational offerings and the way that we ensure that we bring our members along and um, create the kind of mindsets that they need to thrive, that, that is critical. In terms of our advocacy efforts, well, legislation always trails innovation, but unless you advance it, then clearly that will impact adversely as it has in some way, in, in many, many ways, incomes of creators. I mean, you saw with the recent strikes for the writers as well as the actors you know, on the film side, how new technologies are fundamentally changing and disrupting the way that uh, the creative class is, is uh, generating income. Um, and then I would say, lastly, in terms of the awards, um, well, everything from, do you give an award to a song uh, that has AI, who wrote it, who performed it, who produced it? Um, and then if you sort of rewind that, uh, it, given that the full name of the organization is called the National Academy of the Recording Arts and Sciences, uh, uh, well, by virtue of that, science is always a component into what we do, but science continues to evolve and change and affect the way that music is created. We often forget that ultimately the product or even the composition itself or what we hear is directly affected by the very technology that brings it to the consumer, right? Once upon a time, well, there was a limited amount of space you could fit into a vinyl record. And that in many ways influenced the art that was created. Today, you can have infinite space in a cloud-based environment. So what do you do with that if you're a creator? How does that affect your very creation? So all this necessitates ultimately what both you and I are calling an entrepreneurial mindset. Now, yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know, I, uh, growing up in, in the late sixties and then into, into the seventies, it was, you know, it was initially it was always the record player, right? It was the vinyl albums that that you had or, or maybe even some extended plays back then some eps uh and then mixed in with the lps and then i remember the very first time this is about 1974 eight tracks came out my, and my i remember my uncle had a an old ford ltd with an eight track player and listening to the um actually the first album ever i listened to it on that was the neil diamond serenade but the clunkiness of the tracks and how sometimes all of a sudden the song was on and then had to like switch tracks and things. It was just kind of kind of interesting to to get used to used to that. And then cassettes came and then obviously CDs and it just it just 
it just it just keeps it keeps changing and it's interesting too it what you said about but even even the length of it right i mean you know you think of back to the days of of fm radio right and it was okay what's what's going to be a commercial hit and what's the famous line from the billy joel song had to cut it down to 305 right to, to to make it to make it more commercially appealing and then all of a sudden you know stairway to heaven came out and, or or freebird and it was seven minutes long right seven and a half minutes long and so so things things continue i think to to evolve and, and change you know you, you talk about the science the science element of it as well um or artificial intelligence and you think of um how sometimes they do you'll do duets right with with perhaps somebody who's already passed away but through the magic of technology they're they're able they're able to produce that and create the album from that and, and i imagine even the, the sound and the engineering throughout throughout time continues to improve uh you know when you focus on the science part as well i, I think that has to be a fascinating aspect of the industry as well when you look I, I, absolutely um the two are uh almost uh inseparable the the creation and the technology is directly correlated uh, i mean instruments are a tremendous piece of technology and today's instruments are all digital technology um i like to say that a a, a piano is a tremendously complicated piece of of technology right so um even the word technology itself uh, and my friend stelios is greek as am i uh, it literally means, you know, Dechni is art and Loos is the, the, the deep science uh, of art, if you will. So um, even the word technology contains the term art because the two are directly correlated and inextricable from one another. No, absolutely. Absolutely. How about uh, from a perhaps cross, cross collaboration? You think about uh, film and fashion, music, and we already kind of touched on technology. How, how 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 about that from a kind of an an ecosystem for entrepreneur entrepreneurial uh, ventures uh, in in the music business? Creators are creators. Uh, I think any any separation is completely artificial. I mean, we tend to think of things such as the film business, the music business, the technology, the fashion, um, and so forth. But you see, artists like Pharrell for example, that seamlessly weave in and out of different industries, whether it's fashion, uh, whether it's music, uh, whether it's production, uh, the same with so many creators uh, that if you're creative, you, you express yourself through any medium, irrespective of what it is. Uh, or uh, I'll go back to somebody like Madonna, right? Uh, I mean, at her heart, I think Madonna's a performance artist uh, more than anything else, more than a singular sort of, you know, I, I know we tend to think of her as a singer, or as a musician, but um, creators use different media through which to express that uh, creativity. Uh, so without a doubt, especially with digital, um, the migration to, to digital, um, and to things such as short form content, to social media, to all the new platforms that are emerging and disrupting the industries, um, it calls for any creator to ultimately be, be an entrepreneur. And I've argued uh, for a long time in my career, including a book that I wrote called Two Beats Ahead, uh, that the fundamental mindsets of creators are the same as those of, of entrepreneurs. Uh, entrepreneurs are creators themselves. Um, and often, by the way, the two are one and one and the same. So the ability to listen, to collaborate, to iterate, uh, to experiment, uh, to remix ideas into something new, uh, to synthesize information. These are mindsets that whether you are a musician uh, or uh, a, a creator of businesses, they're the same ones you have to use. This ability to sense, for example, the changes that are happening around you and adapt. Uh, it can happen on a stage or it can happen while you're running an organization and it's going through a what I'll call a strategic inflection uh, point. Um, and 
I know from my personal background, uh, I have both a, uh, a degree in music and a degree in business. Um, and uh, I've never seen the two as, 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 as different. My music mind has informed the way I've approached my career. And uh, in my past life, I've um, I was uh, uh, both a technology entrepreneur uh, as well as somebody who's come from the music business. Uh, and I've always applied those mindsets that have been developed in me throughout my uh, my life as a creator uh, onto all kinds of, of, of platforms and journeys. Now, a lot of, certainly well, the adjectives you talked about, the, the different uh, qualities that exist there for, for an entrepreneur or, or, or a musical artist are, are really one and the same. Grit, per, perseverance, being able to pivot, recognize change. And, and and not not forget listening as well, which is certainly an, an important an important part of, of that of that role as well. You know, you think about the ongoing diversification, say, of revenue streams for an artist. Whereas, you know, initially perhaps it was an album and then a tour to promote the album. How do you how do you see that kind of unfolding here? Uh, in the near term, or even 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 uh, looking a little bit further ahead. I mean, I'm kind of old fashioned, so I'm used to going to, going to a concert and you buy the tour book, right? Or maybe a shirt. And there's there's and I have you know in the old days I had my ticket stuff. So there's my there's my memory of, of, of the night. But as as an artist continues to look at 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 that technology at at the diversification of of a revenue stream, how how uh, how conscious do they have to be? And and from the recording academy's standpoint. How do you guys view that space? The industry is cyclical. Um, and it's gone through a number of cycles of, um, I'll say, boom and bust with respect to the various components that make up the music industry. I know we tend to think of the music industry as a monolith, but it's many different businesses. So the touring business, from the recorded business, from the publishing business, they are they're different industries uh, that require in some ways actually different mindsets. Now, the great thing if you're a musician is that you're able to capitalize on all these different revenue sources in a way that most other creators, such as actors, can't always uh, do. Um, in terms of the live industry, well, right now we're going through a massive resurgence. Who would have said that? Three years ago, when we were going through the pandemic, when most of us sat here and thought, we will never go to another concert in our entire life. Our future is going to be what you and I are doing right now, which is, I guess, enjoying things through Zoom, uh, enjoying in in quote marks, because I absolutely despise the, the, this version of communication with humans. I'd much rather have, uh, have been there in person. Um, but... Look at the industry right now. Look at what's happening with Taylor Swift and Beyonce's tours. I mean, they are exploding. They are becoming cultural phenomena. And I thought that was something that was part of a bygone era that 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 left us. Um, so, but who knows? Who knows what the future brings? Now, if there's something that I will say is that I believe that as human beings, we are hardwired to enjoy live entertainment. We'll be doing it for thousands of years if not millennia i don't think that's going to go away uh it's going to change the way that people make money is going to change but uh look also at the innovations that are happening there with the sphere in las vegas if you all haven't seen it or or heard about it you should search it the sphere in las vegas and you should see the show that u2 is putting on right now uh, because it is really a reimagination of the live music experience and how that's um, uh, enjoyed by by people and new technologies will only contribute uh, to new ways that sound is um, as experienced, the new ways that the stage is expressed, and so forth. The the the, the venue in itself now has become part of the of the expression uh, or the toolkit that creators have um, to to express themselves. Um, in terms of recorded music, again, it's going through a disruption right now um, with 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 streaming. But I don't think that chapter has been uh, finalized. I think that we will continue to evolve, and especially with technologies such as immersive audio, um, especially with uh, the advent of AI, uh, with the increase of computing power, 
with uh, a new realms such as um, the metaverse, which I know is a term that right now people feel, well, maybe that was a fad that's gone away. No, it, no, it's not because I, I'm old enough to remember that in the late 90s, when the first wave of the commercial internet was coming about, there was a bust and everybody said, ah, gee, that was a fad. No, it was not. All that sort of groundwork that was laid down eventually contributed to uh, the internet that we are experiencing today. And I think that new technologies, whether that's metaverse, blockchain, NFTs, AI, will go through a series of cycles, but we should not conflate what we're experiencing in the short term with probably the massive impact that they will have over the long term. Uh, so I do believe that all these technologies, which are evolving over the long term, and I, long term for me is 10 years, uh, which in the grander scheme of things is an extremely short period of time, really, uh, will have massive, massive implications in terms of the way that we experience music, and the way that we engage with each other and the way that we experience uh, entertainment. Yeah, you talk about the, the venues and, and being surrounded by, by imaging and, and all of that. I remember going to a concert at the Madison Square Garden probably 40 years ago, and I remember seeing like the first, wow, is that a Macintosh computer on, on, the, on the stage next to the, next to the keyboard player and, and being, being amazed at that. And then you look at all that's, all that's happened all that's happened now it's just it really is phenomenal hey panels how about the next generation uh you mentioned uh some of some of uh, the work the the recording academy does in, in music education how about bringing up that next generation of of people in this industry and the entrepreneurial spirit and continuing that uh how 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 active do you see do you see some college programs or high school programs or you know you think of like campus radio stations and all of those types of things that's a fantastic question. I think that we can't afford as a society to pull back from creative education as uh, a fundamental tenant of, of education. I think that especially in the United States of America, there has been an unfortunate pullback uh, from, um, uh, uh, from creative education, whether it's music or other forms of art. And it's impossible to look at the history of humanity and find one innovator who wasn't also an artist, whether that's called Benjamin Franklin, whether that's called Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, I would argue maybe the greatest human that's ever lived on this planet was Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and well, he was both an incredible artist. People don't know that he was also an incredible musician and also an incredible scientist that pioneered many of the things that we are enjoying today, um, including a lot of his research on, on everything from uh, air travel um, to dentistry, uh, all the way, of course, to painting perhaps the most important painting in, in humanity in, in the Mona Lisa. Uh, so the mindsets, as I said earlier, of creators the ability to listen, to collaborate, to reimagine, remix, rethink. Um, those are uh, a uh, part of what I'll call creative pedagogy that we should not ignore. Um, the ability to uh, synthesize disparate pieces of information and invent something wholly new is at the heart of entrepreneurialism, right? And it's also at the heart of creativity. Um, and for us as a recording academy, we believe and advocate uh, not just for traditional music education, but um, really encouraging the, 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 the fact that schools should not de-emphasize creativity uh, uh, at, uh, or, or, or have creativity take a, a back seat at the expense of introducing, say, what they'll call, you know, more science programs or so-called STEM. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure many of the people listening to this panel have heard of STEM and they've heard of STEAM. 
uh, and the the additional letter in steam is is art. Makes it makes uh, a difference. Yeah, it makes, makes a difference. difference. And to be a complete human being, I think you need this multifaceted education. Um, and it's only through this combination of ingredients of science and technology and engineering and mathematics and art that you're able to become whole. And again, these are artificial separations. I, I, I started the panel by saying that I'm Greek. Uh, well, ancient Greeks never saw art and science and mathematics as separate. Again, some of the greatest mathematicians in the world, like Pythagoras, were also incredible musicians and artists. As a matter of fact, there is something extremely mathematical about music, just like there's something extremely musical and mathematical about the universe. Um, so for me, that is these are critical mindsets to be developed among young people, especially at an era when things are changing so fast. You cannot afford dogma. You have to be continuously adaptable and adaptive uh, because if you become dogmatic and rigid, you will be left behind. Now, agility, agility is really, really important. My, my, my school, part of our, our, our mission statement is not only will we teach you how to make a living, we will teach you how to live. And that's, and that's, that's a well-rounded, you know, foundational type of education, things like liberal arts and core curriculums and art programs and, and, and trying to force through those as well. I've seen some programs too, even here in the New York area, where again, the partnership between the, the schools and even embedding some of the artists into the programs uh, has been has been well received as well and, and getting and getting some 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 interesting enrollment numbers and some opportunities for students and it's been really very very successful you know you think about uh, and, and sometimes they're often they're often uh, talked about together but you think about sustainability and, and all of that that goes into that and diversity uh, how, do, how do you see panos the, from the music the music industry the types of efforts maybe and maybe it's touring maybe it's maybe it's how the albums are made. You think about you think about uh, sustainability, and then perhaps on a diversity side, how do we how do we try from an inclusion standpoint to continue those those efforts that are that have certainly in my lifetime continued to evolve, uh, but whether that's the artists themselves or the people backstage or wh whoever yeah. may be involved in the creation of the art. Um, I, I'll start with diversity, um, and I know that for us as a recording academy, it's uh, it's a it's it's a big deal. Um, in terms of our efforts to diversify our membership, to admit more women, to admit more, admit more people of color, um, and it's it's a journey. There there is no end to the work uh, because even the definition of diversity continues to evolve, as we know. Uh, another thing that's important for us is. Um, you know, you can have gender diversity, you can have racial diversity. Do you have ethnic diversity? Do you have religious diversity? Uh, do you have belief diversity? Um, uh, uh, so um, I think the industry, frankly, still has a very, very long way to go. Um, and I mean, we're not just talking about diversity. We're also talking about equity. And you, when you look at the music history, uh, the, the history of the music business, uh, well, it's... <laughs> checkered to say uh the least in terms of the way that it's approached black creators um in terms of the way that it's remunerated uh the people who have been responsible for creating just about all the sounds and many 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 of the songs that either we enjoy or have influenced all the songs that we enjoy so frankly i think we have a long way to go also when you start looking at uh different um uh uh, disciplines on the engineering or production side there are very few women it's not enough uh, when you look at the live industry it's not diversified uh, in any uh, way that should be with respect to uh, racial diversity um, so and and you all have we all have to come with the belief that ultimately diversity is is not just good and important but it's it, it's the fundamental tenant uh, of of humanity and what makes us great diversity of thought of perspectives 
of experiences is critical to creation. It's critical to, you go back to the word sustainability, to the long-term sustainability of, of, of humanity. If we become too, um, I use the word, I don't know, uh, uh, too singular in the way that we think, I, I think that 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 will uh, be in in, in 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 many ways the end of of humanity as 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 we know it. That's my that's my belief. Um, in, in terms of sustainability, I still think that the music industry has a long long way to go. We recently partnered with the UN Human Rights uh, around a cause called Right Here Right Now, which is to frame the environment uh, and, and and environmental change and climate change as a human right issue. Because it is. Look what's happening with the floods um, in, uh, in in Libya, uh, or the wars that are breaking out uh, in, in in Africa and the Middle East. Um, I mean, many many of these are caused by environmental changes that are causing migrations of populations that are causing devastation. Um, and I do think that as a as an industry, we still have a long way to go to acknowledge the role that we can play. Touring leaves a massive carbon footprint. Um, you know, technology, we forget it, but it still consumes an enormous amount of power, right? For even you and I to enjoy this particular conversation. Um, well, how do you make it more efficient? How do you introduce more computing power that doesn't suck up as much electric power, um, on and on and on. So I think we have a long way to go. Um, I mean, the industry doesn't live in on an island or in isolation. It's part of all this interconnected other industries. So innovation has to keep happening if we are hoping to keep advancing while at the same time not eroding, um, you know, the uh, well, the very soil that gives us what we need to have to be us. You know, one of the things I used to enjoy growing up, and I guess it's harder to do now, although it's it, it may, it's making a bit of a comeback too, is I used to go into the music stores and you look at the different categories and some of the themes and the concepts. And I, I always remember there was always a section called like world music, right? Or, or, or global music, right? Uh, I mean, everything, everything panels you've been describing certainly seems like there are no boundaries anymore. There are no borders. This 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 is a global a global footprint a global business, and the artists that that may be popular or the music that may be popular comes from around the world nowadays. We're not just limited to oh you got to be in Tin Pan Alley, or you come out of out of the Hollywood Hills. It really it really could be almost anywhere in the world now. Thank God. I mean, um, look, uh, for a hundred years the 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 popular uh, culture has been dominated by Western culture. Uh, and primarily by a, let's face it, a white Western culture. And uh, I don't believe that there's a hierarchy of culture. I don't believe that uh, any group of people somehow produce art that's better than others. Um, and I believe that we're finally coming to a new era where, yeah, you know, the biggest star on the planet is, in my view, uh, somebody from africa and and then and and, and, and burn a boy uh uh or our show this year uh the, the american grammy show that's what i'll call it uh was opened by bad bun uh who's a puerto rican um the biggest band on the planet uh, arguably has for the last few years has been a k-pop band in bts uh from korea um a a world and a young, a group of young people uh, like my children that are exposed to different languages, different forms of expression, different rhythms, different harmonies, different chord structures um, is, is, is going to be a better one uh, because you understand that things are not fixed. They're relative. Uh, if you live in America, you see things in a particular way. If you're from Cyprus, like I am, well, when I'm there, I see things in a very different way. Um, and let's face it, if, if, if we can enjoy each other's music, um, uh, 
that means we're open to each other's cultures. If we're open to each other's cultures, that means we are much more willing to accept that somehow our culture is not superior to anybody else's. And I think that has ripple effects in terms of the way we relate, in terms of the way that we uh, uh, choose to uh, see the world around us um and accept i guess our own our own humanity um so i'm i'm hopeful and i do believe that music is fundamentally the the uh, the binding glue in so many ways of of society we don't often stop to think about it because we think of it as just simply a form of entertainment but it's if you if you really step back it is um the, the 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 most basic way that we've evolved as people to communicate with one another arguably predating language yeah it you know it heals us it connects us it's that it's that thread that you that you weave through all all of our different cultures uh it's it could be it certainly could be the i you know when you think of inclusion in any kind of diversity equity and inclusion type of statement it, it's just it's just that it's that piece that unites us makes us feel good about each other and perhaps maybe appreciate each other a little bit more as well. So Panos, thank you for joining us today. I mean, uh, you've taken us through this tremendous entrepreneurial ecosystem here for the, for the music industry and the arts. And we really are so appreciative of your time. Um, any, any last message perhaps for, for, for our entrepreneurial audience today you wanna just maybe end with? Um, well, first of all, thank you, Glenn and Stelios, for, for hosting me. It's always fun to speak to entrepreneurs. I, I've gone through that journey myself. Um, my concluding thoughts are you can be an entrepreneur in anything. You don't have to start a business to be an entrepreneur. You can be an entrepreneur within another organization. You can approach your life entrepreneurially. You can approach your creative journey entrepreneurially, just like you don't have to be a creator to be creative. Uh, you can be an entrepreneur and be creative. You can be working for another company and be creative. I think that fundamentally, we all possess both uh, of those instincts, the entrepreneurial instinct and the creative instinct, because it's what has enabled us, to go back to some of the earlier points, to be resilient as, as, uh, as people. So if you're watching this panel and you somehow think I'm neither of either, well, you're actually wrong. Um, and my last point is just keep being open, uh, keep learning. Uh, the learning journey doesn't stop. Um, and uh, ask and, and seek for yourself to have experiences that are different than what you had yesterday or the day before. And if you keep an open mind, if you keep meeting people that are different than you, if you keep putting yourself in situations and environments that challenge you, um, and you avoid settling into whatever that comfort zone may be, um, I think you'll have a content life. And that's ultimately, I think, what we all want, just to be content, hopefully have an impact, hopefully leave a world that's slightly better than the one that we inherited, that we were born into. And um, what else do you want? Absolutely. Let's hope we all continue to make a difference and, and that journey, that journey will continue throughout this, throughout this, whether it's an entrepreneurial journey or creative journey, one and the same. Thank you so much, Panos, for, for your time today and for your uh, words of wisdom and, and your talk, just outstanding. Panos uh, Panay, everybody, uh, president of, of the Recording Academy, joining us today from Los Angeles. Have a good rest of the day. Nice weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take good care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.